Steve Morris. This is an engine that we have built and been dynoing for Ricky Sahone from Texas. Now this, uh, this engine is also something that we do quite often and people might not think about us about, but uh, we sold Ricky all the parts for this motor. And uh, over the last couple of years, Ricky's been buying parts from us for a 2,500 horsepower combination. And uh, Ricky got some of his own stuff and bought the rest from us, uh, especially all the parts that are real uh, proprietary to us. Pistons, rods, uh, internal components, camshafts, the valve train, uh, pro charger, um, everything that uh, um, EFI system, everything that we really specialize in. This particular motor has a, a CN block, CN aluminum billet block. And then a little bit different is that it has an AFR uh, 385 cylinder head on it. Uh, our valve train package and camshaft, of course, and we set all that up and uh, you know can provide uh, view parts also um, for you to build something and uh, we can uh, do that in-house of course. This is a F3 136 reverse belt drive. Uh, the bracketry on this uh, is probably the most elaborate bracketry I've ever seen in my life. Ricky Sahone owns a CNC shop there in Texas and uh, that is probably a $5,000 bracket because it is pretty cool. There's a lot of 3D work in that bracketry. But uh, anyways, a uh, very cool piece. Um, of course, has our Pro Blue Bell on it. Always worth horsepower. Available and designed right here. Intercooled. We have five inch piping on this. Ricky wanted to try the five inch piping even though we only have a low profile uh, billet elbow that we saw here. That is our buddy Jake uh, from Jake's Performance that uh, makes that, but we sell that and uh, support it with a normal 4 inch elbow. So you can see we have the adapter down from 5 inch into 4 inch, but we wanted to just, just use it and see what it would do. And I also have most of my system set up on 5 inch now with the bigger intercooler. Holly EFI system uh, that Ricky bought from us, and uh, of course we, we tune it and provide tunes for that and provide the the support for all the Holly systems that we sell. And uh, that has a set of uh, uh, the precision billet uh, injectors. And uh, let's see, I think those are 235, two, I think they're 275 injectors. Uh, here you can also see um, we have both of our fuel pumps on it. Because this is a, a, not a mechanical pump, like a, quite often you'd see it was a mechanical pump on these motors. This is an uh, electric pump, and so we ended up having to rig up two of our uh, MagnaFuel uh, ProStar 750 pumps on this, uh, running on 16 volts. My coil system is running on 16 volts, coil on a plug. Um, so our coil's down there. And uh, Runs better on 16 volts, depending on the horsepower level. And uh, we'll tell you that kind of information as you uh, purchase the engines or engine parts from us. But this is on uh, C16 fuel. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we've made uh, several different uh, pulls on this. And per customer request, we have uh, exceeded where our, what we made this package for. Um, you know, we like the, if we build this for a 2,500 horsepower package, that's where we will dyno it and tune it at, um, or just slightly above. I mean, not exactly 2,500. Um, but if the per customer request, if they want to lean on this harder, uh, they will make more horsepower. And the customer asked us to lean on this harder uh, and to see how much horsepower it would make, and we did that. So what we'll do is we'll go out and make some pulls on this thing, uh, show you the pulls on the video, and then go over the numbers. Now let's take a look at the numbers. Now, as I said before, this is at the um, at our 2,500 horsepower level. This motor makes a little bit more, and it really is pretty much due to 
uh, pulley combination that we have on it, uh, what Ricky had set it up as. Since he did all the bracketry and mounted the supercharger himself, uh, he provided us with a, a couple different pulley combinations that he wanted to try. But uh, as you can see, a nice typical Pro Charger centrifugal type um, uh, power curves and torque curves. Uh, this was at uh, 7500 RPM, 7400 RPM. Um, like I said, we're already exceeding because that is 2,669 horsepower at 7400 RPM, 1,894 foot pounds of torque uh, at 35 pounds of boost. Um, that's exceeding just a little bit of what we what we rate this motor at, or actually what we what we build it to, and have designed it for. Um, so we pull back short, and we don't like the. I mean, we're not going to RPM a conventional headed uh, 540 uh, a whole lot more than you know 75, 7800 RPM. It'll probably go out the back door at 8,000, but which is fine. But um, we, we're not we're not here to, to try killing the thing and making the you know. Um, so just the RPM it and see how much horsepower is going to make at higher RPM. We're, we knew we were way over, so we shut, cut the thing short. We knew that he wanted to make another pull at a different pulley level, so that's what we did. Um, but as you can see here, a real nice piece in that at 4,500, we're at 1,094. At 5,000, we're at 1,302. 5,500, we're at 1,576. 6,000, we're at 1,898. 6,500, 2,158, 7,000, we're at 2,446, and uh, 7,400, we're at 2,669. Now what I'll do is we'll uh, load up the next pole. Let me click all out of this. And like I said, as per customer request, um, we will lean on these harder than what we designed it for and uh, uh, what we like to feel comfortable at. Uh, when we do that, it's the customer's responsibility. It's it's the customer's motor at that point in time, so he's going to be uh, responsible for it. Now, as we see here, what we did is we changed pulley combination on it. And... Now another thing that I'll, I'll point out to you, because we can go back and we'll look at the uh, the Holly data. Uh, we we're actually on this pull in particular. I think we just got a couple little bad data lines. We were actually at 40 pounds of boost at 7,500 RPM. But at 40 pounds of boost at 7,500 RPM, you can see that we were at 2,861 horsepower, 2,001 foot-pounds of torque. You can see which is pretty normal up here. Um, and, it, and it would have done this too, it would have laid, laid over at the lower boost level. Um, right in that range it's going to start falling over. But uh, it, it just starts cresting right in this area here at about six, uh, 7300 RPM or so and starts laying over. But uh, real, still real nice centrifugal type uh, power curve, torque curve. That's because boost continues to climb as RPM goes up. And we can take a look at some other numbers here. 4500 was 1158, 5000, 1377, 5500 was 1689, 6000 was 2010, 6500 was 2328, 7000 was 2649, and 7500, 2861. Real nice looking piece. Uh, pretty happy with that. I know Ricky's ecstatic with it. Now what we'll look at is we'll look at the uh, some of the Holly numbers here. And we can see that, uh, I'll just give you a for, for instance, I mean we do a lot of, uh, we tune these things for everybody literally around the world, uh, provide and support uh, for the Holly systems. But uh, right here on this last pull where it was at, we can see right there, 39.6 pounds of boost. Like I said, the Holly was reading just slightly different than what the Dyno was. But uh, you know, fuel flow, as we are uh, going up on that, you can see that fuel flow number right there, pound per hour, uh, gets right up at uh, 1550. 
Uh, that's why we needed to run both fuel pump, both electric fuel pumps on this, so you can keep up with it. And actually, right through here, it's actually uh, losing a little bit of control on the uh, fuel. It's starting to go backwards. All right, now what we'll do? I think I'll uh, go show you the spark plug out of this motor and have a nice little uh, checking fixture here and uh, show you this thing. This is a uh, checking fixture from uh, my buddy there at Mickey's Chassis Works. We sell these, he sells these, goes on your trailer hitch. Uh, we just have it setting in a vise and we've already cut this spark plug apart. But uh, very nice little deal. All you do is run this, comes with the, the right size uh, hole saw, run it right over the top of the spark plug, cuts the top clamping ring off, and voila! And there you go, now you can look at that thing. And that there is still a slightly rich plug. That's, um, um, we could lean, like I said, we could lean on this thing probably even a little bit harder, but uh, we don't want to break parts for people, so we're, uh, Especially on a conventional headed 540, you know, we're trying to keep this thing really pretty nice and easy. But, um, like I said, uh, nice little checking fixture for doing spark plugs. I thought I'd do a little bit different and actually show you the spark plug that came right out of the motor. So, anyways, I am Steve Morris, Steve Morris Engines. Have a great day.